do you ever suffer from creative block? Now, I'm not talking about the sort of block you sometimes get when you stare at a blank door project. I'm talking about a block which is far more serious than that. It's about not being inspired to compose music at all. It's as if you've lost the will to compose. It's almost as if you have fallen out of love with making music. And I can't think of many things which are actually worse than that. So I thought I would ask everyone's favorite artificial intelligence program chat GPT if it had any solutions to the problem and it came up with 11. There's also a sort of bonus solution at the end which we'll get to in due course. Now I'll actually put up a little poll asking if you suffer from creative block in the community section. So if you watch this on mobile you may well have seen the post pop up on your phone. If you're watching this on a desktop, I don't think YouTube actually tells you about posts which are put in the community tab section. Anyway, if you want to check out the post and see how many people suffer from creative block, click the community tab, vote in the poll, and you will get the results. The poll hasn't even been up for 24 hours yet, but the results so far suggest that a massive number of people often get creatively blocked. Anyway, let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. I will pop in in between each section just to let you know what I think of the suggestions. Let's get started. Take a break. Sometimes stepping away from music for a while can be beneficial. Give yourself permission to take a break, relax, and engage in other activities you enjoy. This break can help refresh your creative energy. The only time I can recall when this was a significant issue is when I spent a complete month working seven days a week composing music for a particular project. I made a video about it, card up there, link in the description if you want to check it out. The bottom line, if you don't want to watch it, I burned out completely and I just couldn't get into work after that for a while. So yes, if you are feeling stressed, absolutely you should take a break and just before we go any further i think it is vitally important to look after yourself both physically and mentally next one explore new music listen to a wide variety of music including genres and styles you don't typically explore you might discover new sources of inspiration or fresh ideas by broadening your musical horizons I think this is a great idea in any event, not just if you were feeling blocked. I have always had a, an interest in just about every type of music. When I was young, I listened to pop music, of course, on the radio, but I was also a fan of classical music. When I was about 16, I bought a guitar and I was writing folk songs. When I got a piano, I became interested in jazz. And I think the music we compose is a result and a combination of all our influences. So I think the more music and the more varied types of music you listen to will sort of feed into you and possibly make you a better or more interesting composer. Collaborate. Collaborating with other musicians or artists can be a great way to reignite your passion. Working with others can bring new perspectives and creative dynamics to your music. Yes, I think this is a good one as well. I have sometimes collaborated with a friend of mine and it is massive fun. We haven't actually produced a finished piece of music, but the collaboration process is really interesting. He has a totally different approach to music composition than I do. And it's really interesting for us, I think both of us, to put these two things together and see what comes out. Nothing so far, but great fun and quite inspirational in its own way. Set small goals. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by the idea of composing a full piece, set small, achievable goals. For example, commit to creating a short musical sketch or experimenting with a new instrument or technique. So I guess if you are faced with writing a massive project, maybe a, a complete album or an EP even, you may feel overwhelmed. So yeah, break it down into small steps. That's how you can solve just about any problem. So they reckon. But what I liked about this was the last section, try different techniques. Now, as I said before, I have an interest in all sorts of music, including some avant-garde music, shall we say, serial music, music which I probably wouldn't try to write. But it's interesting, I think, to explore some of these different facets of music making. 
I do have a couple of videos about Krell music. I'll try to stick a card up there, but I will put links to those and anything else I talk about in the description. So that was a bit of a weird one. Very interesting. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure how much you will enjoy listening to it, but it was a wonderful creative experience, if I can say that. And I also experimented with phase music, made famous by Steve Reich, is it? And I made a video about that as well. So exploring and experimenting new musical ideas and techniques, I think, can be very rewarding. It can get you started again, get you creating music of some sort, and who knows where that might take you. Limit your options. Sometimes, having too many choices can be paralyzing. Try composing with limited instruments, sounds, or a specific theme to simplify the creative process. Yes, I really like this one. It's a well-known technique. Modern music production has given us access to literally hundreds of thousands of different sounds and it can be overwhelming. I have a silly number of synths, soft synths and presets which I've mentioned before. So occasionally what I will do, I will try a synth which I haven't used for a while or possibly forgotten about. I'll go through the list of synths and say, oh, I wonder what this one does. And what I also often do is try to use that one synth for as much of the composition as possible. And I have done a couple of one synth challenges. Again, cards and links will be wherever I can put them. And I think this is a really fun and interesting exercise. And the idea behind limiting your options is that this tends to focus you more on what you have and what's available. And that extra focus can often result in creative output. Well, that's the theory. If you are feeling a bit stuck, I would absolutely recommend you try the one synth challenge. Even if you don't finish a complete piece, I think it's an interesting thing to do and it will help you understand that particular synthesizer a lot better than you possibly already know it. Routine and discipline. Establishing a regular routine for composing can help you overcome creative blocks. Set aside dedicated time for music, even if you don't feel particularly inspired. Sometimes, creativity emerges during the act of creating. Now, I don't actually know how musicians tend to work. I know how many writers tend to work, and including many famous writers. And many famous writers set aside a particular time of day when they would write. So that works for writing. Will it work for music? I actually don't know. Back in the day when I was writing articles and doing reviews of software and hardware synths for magazines, I did have a routine. That was just so I could get through all the work and get through the day. Now, at the moment, I don't have any deadlines, not music deadlines. I do have deadlines self-imposed for making these videos. And I sort of wonder if I did set aside time for making music when I just had to sit down and compose music, would I write more music? Again, this is a very personal suggestion and will vary from person to person, but it is something you might want to try. See how it works. Seek inspiration. Explore sources of inspiration beyond music. Visual art, literature, nature and life. Experiences can all provide fresh ideas and perspectives. This is another interesting one. Um, I actually made a video. I know, I'm sorry, I seem to be plugging a lot of videos in this video. But I made a video about something Hans Zimmer said in his masterclass. And that went something along the lines of the picture will tell you the story. And if you are composing music for a movie or for media, then it indeed does need to tell you a story. And in the video which I produced, links and descriptions and all that sort of stuff, I showed a series of images and explained what they meant to me and how I might interpret them. And I was really curious to see if other people would have the same reaction to them. Again, it was a fun exercise, so check it out and see if your thoughts about these images agree with mine. But in any event, looking at nature itself, being out in the great outdoors, but even staying indoors, you could look at images of famous paintings, for example, and see if they inspire you to write a piece of music. What is the picture saying to you? Educational resources. Consider enrolling in music courses or workshops to learn new skills and techniques. Learning something new can reignite your passion for music. I think I've been fortunate 
in that most of my working life as a musician and as a music writer, it has been one continual, continual, continuous, continual and continuous learning experience. I had to learn new gear, new synthesizers, new methods of synthesis. I had to learn how to use the soft synths and program them. So my life in a sense has just been one continuous learning experience. And they say that learning new things can keep your mind fresh and active and possibly stave off the ravages of old age and dementia. Probably a bit late for me. But if you are lacking in some areas of music production, now I hesitate to mention music theory, uh, but you could brush up on your music theory. Personally, I do think it's a big help. You don't need it to compose music, but I certainly think it helps. But other than that, you could improve your playing techniques. You could learn how to program synthesizers if you need to brush up on that. You could improve your mixing, your mastering techniques. There are 101, probably a thousand and one different things in the music arena that you could learn. And I think that's a great thing to do in any event. Connect with others, join online music communities, forums, or social media groups where you can share your work and connect with fellow musicians. Feedback and support from peers can be motivating. Yes, feedback from peers can be motivating, but it can also be disheartening. You have to be very careful, I would say, who you ask to criticise your music. If you have a friend who will give you an honest opinion, don't ask your family or most of your friends, because they will just say it is wonderful. That's what family and friends are for. But if you have a friend who will give you an honest opinion, hang on to them, because that is what you need. But social media, I'm not a massive fan of social media. I do have a social media account. I am really easy to find, but I think it is a massive time waster. Now, if you live your life on social media, you're watching this, this is form of social media, I guess, YouTube, of course it is. But hopefully you are learning something of use and benefit. You are not sending people pictures of your latest meal with a lol underneath it. Apologies if anybody does that a lot. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of oh relevant fluff and nonsense on social media. It's really easy to get sucked in and get carried away. And before you know it, your time has disappeared. There are groups, I believe, who will hopefully constructively criticise your music. But personally, I would rather use a friend. That's just me. Reflect on your goals, take some time to reflect on why you started composing music in the first place, and what you hope to achieve. Revisiting your long-term goals can help you find renewed purpose. Well, believe it or not, I don't have a lot to say about this. I don't have any particular goals in mind when I compose the music. I just really enjoy the process of creating music, something from nothing, and hopefully playing it to people who will also enjoy it. I guess that's my goal in composition. But if you have any bigger or wider goals, then that suggestion may make more sense to you. Professional help. If you're experiencing persistent feelings of discouragement or lack of motivation, it might be helpful to talk to a counsellor or therapist who can provide guidance and support. Well, this sounds pretty serious, I think, if you feel you need to get help. Uh, we're talking about mental health and so on. I'm absolutely not qualified to talk about this. But I guess if you really enjoy composing but have been unable to do so for several weeks or months possibly, then it may be an idea to seek help. I didn't say that. Chat GPT did. And this is the final point. It's not actually numbered as a point. It's just a summary. But listen to this. Remember that creative slumps are a natural part of the creative process and they don't define your abilities as a musician. Be patient with yourself, and don't be afraid to seek help or try new approaches to rediscover your passion for composing music. I think that probably qualifies as suggestion number 12. I think most creative people go through a series of ups and downs, whether you are a composer, a musician, a writer, an artist, a sculptor, anything creative, I think, involves this sort of up and down. Now, if you are a professional composer, you do not have the luxury of having an off day. You just have to get on with it. And yeah, I've made another video about this. Something my BFF, Guy Mitchell Moore, said is the difference between amateur and professional composers. 
but I think it's important to remember that most of us we do have these good days and bad days and days when we just really don't want to switch on the machine or the synthesizer and have a fiddle about we just don't want to do that i think it's important not to be too dismayed just take a day or two or three or four off and then come back to it and see how you feel then so thank you chat to gpt for those interesting ideas what did you think of them have you had a creative block and did you use any of the ideas suggested by those which we've just heard to get through it let me know in the comments let me know if you think any of these are particularly useful or maybe even not useful i think it's a pretty good list and if you do need a bit of motivation i think just looking at those suggestions might help and if you've enjoyed this video maybe you would like to consider subscribing to the channel if you don't do so already ringing the bell thank you and clicking the big thumb that would be a big help as well as always thank you so much for watching and if you have enjoyed this video i think you will enjoy these videos too thanks again see you soon in the next video